Hey, good morning everybody. John Bergsman here from Domka Outdoors in Monroe, and we're gonna start touring the Great Lakes at our open water shops, because guess what? We're that time of year already. We've got open water on the horizon. We're gonna talk about that a little later this week. Today, we've got some awesome reports. Starting out at Saginaw Bay, and there's a reason I'm starting on Saginaw Bay and stay with me for a great report, but also a little cautionary word. Then we're gonna move up to the Traverse City region and talk about an awesome bite that's been going on there for the last month or month and a half, and that's a great burbot bite as these burbots start uh, making their run to the shallower water to spawn. And uh, so two great reports today. It's Tuesday morning. Hey, I'm back from Florida. I'm sporting a tan here from Domka Outdoors. So hey, Saginaw Bay, guys. It's been an awesome year for ice fishing on Saginaw Bay. Not every year do we get good safe ice for an extended period of time. This year is one of those years where we did. Um, and uh, we're gonna start today, Tuesday, even though it's a little warmer out today, and that's got a lot of people nervous, and quite frankly, for good reason. But stay with me, we've got an awesome report from Steve Webb, who's been fishing consistently there for the last three weeks, and tells me that the fishing has really been good for walleye, starting to move to the shallows, 10 to 15 feet of water, as well as even shallower, less than 10 feet of water for perch. And uh, his presentations have been this, it's perch and shallow in the mornings, and it's walleye in the afternoon and evenings, running back in to wherever you're based at, and uh, grabbing a little lunch and then coming back out or just bringing your lunch with you. Steve's been cooking it out on the ice. That's the way to go if you got decent weather. Now, the cautionary thing is, is anytime you're on a Great Lakes body of water and you're talking about ice fishing and warming temperatures and currents and all the rest, you're gonna have pressure cracks, you're gonna have issues with the ice, and it's gonna happen much quicker on bodies of water that are connected to the Great Lakes just because of inherent currents. So. Our caution to everybody is if you're gonna go ice fishing this week and beyond, you really need to be a veteran ice fisherman to Saginaw Bay or be out with a guide. And I would always suggest that guys go out in bigger groups of people. Couple things Steve said, don't incorrectly try to cross pressure cracks if you don't know what you're doing. If you're running motorized stuff out there, you really gotta know what you're doing in order to traverse some of these areas. They're gonna get dangerous later in the week, guys. We got four, week, four days this week of above 40 degree temperatures. It doesn't look that terrible windy, but still, pressure cracks are gonna open up and that's gonna strand some people if they don't know what they're doing. But again, the fish are starting to move shallow, so if you're really wanting to fish Saginaw Bay, you don't necessarily have to run way out, and I would suggest against it, quite frankly. Perch again, less than 10 feet, walleye 10 to 15 feet. Presentations have been Cleos or uh, Swedish pimples. Uh, the gold or the silver, tip, you're not tipped, but you know, with either blue or chartreuse or bright green flash tape. Nice minnow head on it, it's working great. If you're going for perch, a dew jigger or something like that, a Russian, uh, a Russian spoon with a red eye, uh, a red egg on it, been working really, really good. Steve said he's seen a lot of uh, whitefish coming into the holes as well in big groups. You know, hitting and taking the minnow, but most of the time not taking it all the way in. So that's kind of been the situation. But again, cautionary report. Uh, I'm, I'm taking no responsibility for anybody who goes on the ice. There is safe ice out there, but you really just gotta know what you're doing when it comes to moving around. And how long that ice stays safe, well, that's something you're gonna have to check with guides on a day-by-day -day basis. So Saginaw Bay is still kicking out really good catches of perch and walleye, but be careful. Angler Quest pontoons are better than ever. The big water fishing machines are wider. The tubes are bigger for more stability and safety. There's a new rail system that's stronger and more functional. The Bimini is redesigned, and the extended transom makes landing those big fish easier. Plus, the AnglerQuest furniture package offers more style and comfort. The 2022 lineup of AnglerQuest boats is the best yet, and they're the hottest fishing pontoons on the water. For more details, go to the website anglerquestpontoons.com. AnglerQuest, built with purpose. So hey, another great report coming in from J.P. Matlock, who's always been sending in awesome reports to us. This time he sent one in from up north in the northwest corner up there in the greater Traverse City region for Lake Charlevoix. And this is a burbot report. Now this burbot bite happens, you know, the month of February and early and all the way through March. 
you know, all over on these northern Michigan lakes. Burbot are typically a deep water fish, and, and uh, then under the ice in March, they start sliding up and they start picking out the shoals and the reefs that they're gonna um, feed on and ultimately spawn on late ice. So, burbot right now, JP tells me, has been on Charlevoix, have been between 100 and 107 foot of water was the depth he was finding the best fish. He was getting them two different ways. Now, if you've never been burbot fishing, stay tuned. We're gonna do some burbot informational stuff for you next early ice to get you tuned into it. We're also gonna do that with smelt to help more people get out and understand how to be a good smelt or burbot fisherman because they're two great species to catch and eat. So the burbot fishing, he was, had a spread of tip-ups out, uh, deep tip-ups, so you know, 107 feet of water. So he's putting a pretty good weight on and then letting the last 18 inches of his uh, tippet line, which was an eight pound fluorocarbon tippet line, run free with just a dorsal hooked minnow. Uh, you know, and also cut half of the tail of that minnow off to make it less, um, less able to move, if you wanna be honest. The burbot are a little bit swinging and miss fish. So it takes them like three or four tries just to get a normally maimed minnow, much less a lively one. So, you know, if you wanna add your catch, just clip the bottom half of the tip of the tail off just to give that minnow just a little less chance of getting away and struggling away without killing the minnow or harming him too bad. So he'll struggle down there. Um, set that, you know, in the bottom one foot of the water column. But burbot typically cruise with their bellies pretty close to the bottom. And when they sense the presence of food, then they'll locate it. It might take them a few minutes, but they'll locate it and go ahead and eat it. So that secondary 18 inch uh, uh, line might have just a real small uh, split shot, maybe halfway down, nine inches down it, just to keep that minnow close to the bottom. So that's the way you set up your down, uh, your down rod or your tip up rod. Now, if you're jigging, you're gonna use a Swedish pimple. You know, JP told me that the white based pimps have been the best with either chartreuse or green or something really bright on it. Now, JP likes to load a minnow head on each of the barbs, not a full minnow, just a minnow head. And then, you know, pinch it off with just a little bit of meat, not just the head, but a little bit of the body exposed to, pinch it off there. Just go ahead and let that scent out. Those three heads on the barbs will uh, really, that scent will attract. And the key to getting burbot to even be in your area is to really with your jigging rod be aggressive. In other words, you're gonna pound bottom repeatedly, you know, every probably four or five minutes, you're gonna go and pound bottom and create a little bit of silt in the area. Burbot are kind of like lake trout in that they're really, really curious and they come in when they hear that uh, Swedish pimple pounding on the gravel or the rock or, or, or whatever bottom you're on. And they'll search out what's creating the disturbance. And so when you're at rest, you're gonna have that Swedish pimple probably six inches off the bottom. And then you're gonna pound the bottom and then do a couple of long lifts and falls, you know, flutter lifts and falls to get their attention and get them in the area. Now, there's no guarantee they're gonna hit your Swedish pimple. They might swim over and hit your dead rod or your, or your tip up rod as well. But that's a great way to just get burbot working in the area, moving around, looking for the disturbance. So again, Lake Charlevoix, 100 to 110 feet of water using deep water tip ups and jigging rods. Try it out. There's still a lot of ice fishing left up in the North Country, guys. We're gonna probably be coming to you with future reports for the next two or three weeks for sure. When the Saginaw Bay and Monroe and the other areas on the Great Lakes let loose, that is no way, shape, or form the end of the ice fishing season when you get up above that Houghton Lake and North area. That, there's a lot of ice up there right now. Some places, two feet of ice. So it's gonna take a good long time, probably the whole month of March in a lot of cases, to get rid of this ice. So this is an opportunity you can take, uh, you know, take advantage of. So check it out. Read the report, the written report on Fisherman's Digest and uh, get yourself up there and experience a really unusual way to fish. Domka Outdoors in Monroe is Southeast Michigan's one-stop sporting goods destination. Featuring all your fishing needs, including live bait and the area's largest selection of custom painted banded crankbaits. Domka Outdoors has a large selection of guns and ammunition, archery equipment and supplies as well as an archery service department and indoor archery range. Stop by today or shop our online store.
So hey, uh, awesome reports today from those two guys. Thanks JP for a great report for that Charlevoix Burbot. And thanks Steve Webb. These guys have kept us informed all year long. Uh, and uh, thanks to Domco Outdoors for letting us set up shop in front of their custom bait selection. And we're gonna talk on Thursday about this bait selection when we do our Monroe open water report, uh, which it's not open yet, but we wanna get you geared up for next week, the end of next week. So we're gonna talk about some early season tips and tactics. So make sure you tune in on Thursday.